Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Joao. And I'm Irene from the Scientific Affairs Office here at Illumina. Today we're doing something a little bit different and we have Gary Schroth here who is a uh, co-author in, in a very interesting paper that came out on the sexual transmission of Ebola disease. Gary, can you tell us a little bit more about um, this particular case? Yeah, so this was an interesting case that um, started as a, as a collaboration between uh, my group and a project led by Steve Gross, um, along with a lot of other people in the, in the organization working on a new method called RNA access. And we had started a collaboration with some researchers, expert virologists at, um, at US AMRID in uh, Maryland, who are experts in Ebola. And um, they were testing out this method and sort of, uh, you know, characterizing how well it worked. And then this interesting case came up of apparent sexual transmission of Ebola, which was, uh, which happened much sort of outside the time window of most uh, uh, epidemiologists and public health uh, experts thought that you could transmit the disease. I think it was 155 days, it was an apparent transmission after this uh, man was supposedly cured, his blood was, cure, uh, was clear of Ebola, he transmitted it sexually to a woman who ended up dying two weeks later. And they had a positive PCR result from his semen sample uh, at that day, but it was very, very low levels of, um, of of virus, and so they were not sure that they were going to be able to fully characterize the genome of this Ebola, and that's really what they needed to know. They needed to know they had his genome from when he was originally infected. They had the genome from the woman uh, uh, that um, uh, had passed away, and they wanted to make sure that the genome that was in his uh, semen at the time would be the same sort of match, right? And so that, that's where they, they ended up using this method. So what kind of information was next generation sequencing able to tell you that traditional PCR methods couldn't? Yeah, so traditional PCR is very good at detecting quantitatively, do you have uh, uh, infection or not? Do you have virus or not? Um, and, it can, and it can detect very uh, low levels of virus, but it doesn't give you any information about the genotype or the genome, the sequence of the virus. So this virus is about 10,000 bases long, um, this particular strain that they suspected infected this woman had like eight um, uh, variants that were unlike any other strain in the world that had been sequenced. And so they wanted to confirm that the, that the variants that were in this woman and that were in this man originally were also the same variants that were in his semen so that he, they could rule out a, a sort of a reinfection or some other sort of um, uh, infection model. And so using this method, they were able to sequence get enough genome sequence to identify seven out of those eight variants, which proved without a sort of shadow of a doubt that that, that that same virus that was barely detectable in his semen had infected this woman and killed her. Do you think that will change the way people monitor uh, Ebola? Well, apparently it, it has already. I'm, I'm not an expert in Ebola or, or public health issues, but um, I have read the the um, World Health Organization's recommendations now based upon this study and others that are coming out. Whereas they used to say don't have unprotected sex after uh, a, a month or two um, uh, after you've been cleared of Ebola. Now I think their guidance is for many, many months based upon this study and, and I think others. Well, thank you very much. That, that was really interesting. But uh, unfortunately, that's all for today. We'd love to hear your thoughts about our show and topics you'd like us to discuss. Be sure to pass along this exciting research. Until next time, bye. Bye.